Hey everyone, in this video I want to talk about coding plugins for WordPress with AI. So one of the big unlocks of AI so far has been that software development has become much easier. AI is actually really good at generating codes and it's getting better and better. So maybe you've already wondered, can I do something with this in terms of uh, WordPress? Maybe plugins or themes and perhaps even uh, replace some of the things that you're paying for right now because some of these plugins can actually get really really pricey so it's actually really interesting to see if we can perhaps replace them with our own plugins that we're coding ourselves and maybe you're thinking oh i don't know code or maybe i don't know specifically php code well i think with ai this is not as big of a problem as before because with AI, you can basically prototype your, your plugin or theme and basically see if it works. And then if you do want to make it really professional, at that point, you can always, well, either learn yourself a bit or uh, ask somebody for help. But you can get really far with AI. So in this video, I want to show you, well, a plugin that I built myself and actually have integrated here into a WordPress instance. So if I refresh this page, I have created a project inquiry page. And so you can imagine that you're collecting leads on a page on your website where people can fill out a form. So maybe I offer some kind of uh, IT project services and somebody uh, is interested in finding out the pricing or something like that. I have a multi-step form here and I filled out my details here. I can go to the next step and I can say, you know what, I'm looking to build an app. It's about Right. I have a certain budget for that. And then here I can specify some more details. And here we have an overview. And ultimately I can submit this right here. So now it's been submitted here. And now if I go into my WordPress dashboard, I can go to my plugin entries here. And I can see there has been a new entry here. I have some information about all the data that has been submitted here. I can export it all as a CSV file. And if I open that up, you can see it's basically a CSV file with all the data from the submissions. So I was able to code this actually almost exclusively with AI. And in this video, I want to walk you through it. Now I'm going to use cursor in this video, but I've also had great experiences with Visual Studio Code uh, and GitHub Copilot. Actually, it's all really good. Of course, maybe you've also seen Lovable or Bolt. There are some other uh, tools out there as well that are also really good but i find with uh, plugins or with something that gets a little bit more technical at some point you do perhaps want to tweak the code and it is a little bit easier to do that in an ide and so far i've really enjoyed cursor as well as visual studio code so uh, i think either of them works but in this video i will use cursor and we will also take a look at how we can actually make it work in a live wordpress instance i'm going to use cloudways for that they're also today's sponsor i had a great time using them very powerful wordpress hosting available here i'll show you all about it how to set up a server it's very easy and then i'll also show you how to actually make the plugin work on a real life WordPress website. But let's start from scratch here. So I have opened up cursor here and I have opened up a new folder on my computer. I call it WordPress AI example. It's completely empty right now. Where do we start? Well, here in cursor, we have this AI agent that we can use. So I have it in agent mode and will automatically pick the model for me. So I'll say create a WordPress plugin that allows the admin to set up multi-step forms from the WordPress dashboard. We should then be able to embed a form on any page. When the user submits a form, we should store the entry and make all data available for export with CSV, right? Something like this. And let's just go ahead and see what it can do. So it will have to create uh, some scaffolding here. All right, so you can see it first comes up with like a plan or to do's. So first it does some scaffolding and then it will do the other steps here. So you can quickly see what it's going to do. If it goes completely off the rails or it has a bunch of irrelevant things, you can already go ahead and, and stop it. But uh, most of the time it's pretty good. If you're trying to do something really out of the ordinary, it may actually not do great. But overall, it's uh, been working really well for me. I gave it a pretty big task here, so this may actually take some time. All right, so now it is uh, finished with that. And I can see that it has created a new folder and actually it put the files in there. So let me actually just move all those files out of that new folder it created. I will actually delete that new folder so we have everything here in the root. Now, if we take a look at the code here, let's take a look at what it did here, right? So again, if you're not familiar with PHP, it would be really 
tough to uh, code all of this yourself. So this is one of the big advantages of AI. It's uh, it's so much easier to generate code. Now, of course, if you're going to release this to other people, let's say you do want to make sure that it's safe and that it, it does what it's supposed to do. But here we're just prototyping and all of this makes sense, right? So it's basically just creating the code for the different features. So here we have a download CSV feature. And ultimately here at the bottom, we can see it registers an activation hook. So basically with WordPress, the way it works with plugins is you're not, we don't want to change the core code of the WordPress instance. We basically just want to hook into these, uh, well, hooks. There's an activation event that we can hook into. Now, Okay, so now it has created a bunch of code, but how do we know if it actually worked? We would have to actually see it in a real WordPress instance, right? So if you have generated a bunch of code, and not just that PHP file, it has also generated these assets. So these are meant to be included in the uh, client side, so JavaScript and CSS. So there's a bunch of code now, but how do we actually know if this works? Well, you can open up a terminal, so we can actually spin up a WordPress instance locally. So I can actually run uh, this command here, let me actually show you this in full. So it's MPX WordPress Playground. So basically WordPress allows us to have like a local playground so we can quickly test things out. And we want to automatically include our plugin in there and also be logged in. So let's actually see what we get if we do that. So you can see starting PHP server, setting up the latest WordPress, booting WordPress, activating the plugin. And now you can see it's running on a localhost address. So if we go there, you can see I have a local WordPress instance, including admin dashboard. So let's actually go there. All right, so here we have the WordPress dashboard. If I go to plugins, you can see our plugin is right here, even with description. And how does it know all of that? Well, that is because in this file here, if I go up, you can see we have plugin name. So it knows the exact name to use here, WordPress AI multi-step forms, a description uh, so that is that is displayed here, and then also a version, uh, the author and the license, etc. Right, so this is just a dummy project. Uh, so this is all just an example, but right, so you would have to fine tune it to fit your needs. But at least now we can see it, and you can see it has contributed something here called forms, and we can add and we can have entries here, and we can add a well, it's called a post here. I would like to rename that. So we can add a post here and here we can specify our form. So basically in a multi-step form, we have to specify which steps. Right? So in this case, we would actually like to have something with uh, like a project inquiry. So I would like to change the default uh, JSON here as well. So we can specify the form and then we should be able to embed it here. Now I don't see any instructions on how we could then embed the form. So that's also something I would like to change. And here we see some other a bit of a strange thing as well, right? So here, of course, now we need to iterate over our plugin. We have to ask the AI here, for example, uh, it should be a project inquiry form that is the default JSON, because maybe I anticipate that the people who are gonna use this are mostly going to be doing this to collect leads. So this would be a use case they have. And so it makes sense to make that the default, right? So basically now, I know how it looks like, I wanna improve it. I'm going to go back and forth with the agent here until it is basically the exact thing that I want. All right, so I've gone ahead and already did that. So ultimately what I landed on is this, and again, it's not perfect. There's gonna be a bunch of issues, but it's okay, cause I'm just prototyping. Now you can see here it's, it's activating. So actually it will create something in a database, it's possible to do that as well. And it has basically created different classes here. So first the WordPress instance itself, the core will be created, the, the core will, will boot up, and then our plugin can basically be activated. So we have our own core logic here for the plugin, and then we have some code for the admin panel. So here we can, for example, render the entries, so the submissions, but we can also clear the entries. Remember, so people will be filling out forms on the client side. So then the data has to go back to our WordPress server side, so we can actually store it in the database, for example. So we will have to open up some kind of API endpoint so that we can actually submit data. So we can actually do that here as well. We can register a REST route, so that's also something we can do. And it has created some kind of front-end class um, which will help enqueue the scripts that need to be included on the client side, right? So we have these assets, JavaScript and CSS, those have to be included on the page as well. Uh, something here for short code, this will allow us to embed a form on the page. 
So you can see pretty complex here. I did not manually do much here at all. This was almost everything generated by AI. I just described in natural language what I wanted to do. It has even included uninstall here. So if the user actually wants to get rid of the plugin, we may want to run some logic as well. For example, dropping the table, the data that we had. I made a bunch of changes. So I am restarting that local playground. So here it is. And now if I go to my plugins, I can see right here that I have a plugin here, I renamed it a little bit. It should be activated. Now, by the way, if you're making changes and you wanna see the changes, you don't need to restart the playground. You can actually just deactivate and then activate again. So here I now have AI forms. So I don't have any forms created yet, so I can create one. And here now you can see I have a form. I can just call it project inquiry form. And you can see now the JSON here, basically the uh, description of what the form should be about is now by default a project inquiry form with multiple steps. And it also shows me now how to embed this on a page. So I can publish this. So now the form is uh, published and now it shows me how to embed this on a page. If we uh, copy that and now on a page, where do I want to show the form? Well, on any of these, let's just use sample page here. Let me actually rename it to project inquiry. And here I just need to include a short code block, short code. And I just paste that snippet that they showed and I save right here. Okay, so now page updated, view page, and here we go. I now have a form here on a page here. So I can say, Wesley, I have a project inquiry. It's multi-step, I can go to the next one. I have an app here, 20K, next. I have some ideal start date. If I go to next, I can see a summary and I can ultimately actually submit the form and now where can we see that all the use all the people that have submitted it where can i see that well actually here under tools i have entries here so for my plugin here i have entries we can see there's been an entry here we have some information and i can actually export it as a csv file as well let's open that up you can see here i can see the data here as well how cool is that i didn't i have a multi-step plugin here and you can see that this is already pretty sophisticated, right? So we're able to create custom forms. We're able to embed them on any page we want. It's multi-step. In fact, I actually added some local storage as well. So if the user leaves in one of the steps and comes back later, the data is still there. We're able to submit the data from the user's browser to our WordPress server. So there's a REST API endpoint. We're able to store it in a database and actually display it as well and even export it as a CSV file. So not a super trivial plugin. It actually touches multiple aspects of the WordPress functionalities. So I was actually pretty surprised at how good it already was. Now this is all still local, right? So I was just using the local WordPress playground. Of course, in a real project, we would want to actually submit it to a live WordPress instance as well. So I've really enjoyed using Cloudways for this. So let me show you how to set it up here on Cloudways as well. And then I'll show you how to set it up in a live WordPress instance because it's a little bit differently, right? So you do need to know a little bit about that. With Cloudways, I can set up a server. So I already have a server, but let's say I want to add a new one. So I can decide what I want to run on that new server. You can see they have options for all sorts of PHP applications, but we are here for WordPress. I can give it some name and let's say I'm going to call it like this. You can pick the application stack you want and now you can pick your server so this is pretty interesting because cloudways is actually a digital ocean company but they allow you to pick a server from these other providers as well in case you prefer that however i've actually had great experience here with digital ocean so i don't need to change here uh, you can pick your server type they have some templates here so uh, this is the default but if you anticipate that you, you will need more resources feel free to pick a more powerful option here you can pick your location here as well and then you can go ahead and launch the server to get the server online it may take a few minutes but after a few minutes you will see your server live here if you click on it you will see all the options that you can configure for that server so all sorts of options here i recommend that you check all of them out so we now have a server but on a server we want to have applications you can have multiple applications. So here under applications, by default, it has also created a WordPress application on that one server, but you can add multiple if you want. So I have one WordPress application here. So here, the, so here we have the settings for that particular application. Very powerful, we can have staging environments. Uh, there's all sorts of security settings here, domain management, cron jobs, SSL certificate. So I actually had a great time using all of that. Now, of course, we wanna go to the actual admin panel now. So they will generate a username and password for you. So here 
I can now go to the panel. I just have to log in with these and just copy the password right here and log in. All right, so here we now have a brand new WordPress instance in the cloud. So this is actually live and other people can see it. You can see it's using the Cloudways domain. And right now it's just a brand new install. We, didn't, we do not have our plugin here yet. So if I go here, you can see I do not have the plugin that we created. So these are just some default plugins we get out of the box here. So now how do we get our own plugin on a live instance here. So this is done with zipping up our code into a zip file and then uploading the zip file. So make sure you do not have like a nested folder in here again. So I have all of this in the root of this WordPress AI dash example folder. And that folder is what I will compress. So on Mac, I can do control uh, click on that folder and there will be an option here for compressing. If I click on that, you can see I have a zip file here. If I double click on it to open it, it will actually show me that right here. I can quickly inspect if that went all right. So this looks good. So now I just need to upload this zip file. So here under plugins, you can click on add plugin and here is upload plugin we can choose a file so i picked that zip file and then i can just click on install now be very fast plugin installed successfully we can immediately go ahead and activate it as well so now if i go here you can see we have our plugin right here again so let's see if this still works as before so if we go to ai forms we have an overview of the forms that we created well zero so far on this particular instance and then here i have my default template again i will call it project inquiry and i will go ahead and publish that it shows me how to embed this well now it, it can also do it with an id well, it shows me here how to embed it so now let's go to a page let's actually create a new page project inquiry and i will create short code here and i just have to paste that particular snippet now i can go ahead and publish it okay so let's actually go to that page and here we go it's now live on my cloudways website right not local let's see if we can actually actually submit something here so I will just fill this out, click on next. So we have multiple steps. All of that is looking good. You can pick some time and date. And here we have an overview, but let's actually go ahead and submit it. All right, so that looks good. All right, so now if I go to my uh, admin dashboard here under tools, entries, we can see there has been a new entry here. And let me actually try exporting and that works as well. Let me open up this, let me just, let me open this up one more time. All right, so here, if I open up the file, we can see that it contains the data that I submitted. And so there you go. I was able to vibe code with AI, a, I would say pretty uh, complex uh, plugin here. Now it took me about uh, half an hour or so to really uh, get it to work. I would need to spend a little bit more time on it to actually verify that, it's, that it does certain things properly and it's safe and so on. But the fact that you can get so far in, well, an hour or so is actually pretty amazing. And it's only getting better. So these AI agents are getting better and better. So maybe you have a good idea for a plugin or maybe you want to replace a plugin, right? Maybe the plugin is quite expensive or it doesn't do something that you want, or maybe it's not been maintained and uh, you need that functionality. So in that case, you may actually want to try prototyping it with a coding agent. For the live WordPress instance, I've actually had a great time using Cloudways. I highly recommend that you check them out. You can find a link in the description. It's actually a really powerful platform for hosting WordPress, but also other PHP applications. They also have an autonomous option here so if you really need that auto scaling ability for example they offer that as well and they now also have a co-pilot so we're building plugins with ai and now on your live wordpress instance you can also get ai powered insights it's all ai these days so check them out as well in any case hope this helps you out thank you for watching and i hope to see you in the next one bye